right. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is <clears throat> five o'clock and I am calling this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Nancy Sykes Klein. Here. Roxanne Horbath. Here. Barbara Blonder. Here. Cynthia Garris. Here. Kim Springfield. Here. All right. Um, today we will have Mr. David Carlson of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints give our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Vice Mayor Roxanne Horbath. Um, Mr. Carlson, you're welcome to come to the podium. Please stand. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful this evening for the opportunity to meet with our civic leaders. We're grateful for them, grateful to have leaders who are concerned for our community, who uh, focus their efforts on blessing the lives of each uh, person within their community. We're grateful for their efforts, grateful for their sacrifice. We ask that that would continue to bless them that they uh, may continue to have wisdom and courage to be able to lead our community. Bless also their families, their relationships as they sacrifice time away from those that they love that uh, they may have the ability to continue to foster those relationships. We're grateful as a community to be here tonight and uh, pray for thy spirit to be with us that we might find and seek opportunities to further our community to Bless individual lives and families and relationships. We're grateful for these great moments that we have to be together, to work uh, with unity towards the greater good of each person in this community. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We do have a general public presentation. Um, I received a call from... Um, Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints and their special efforts in the community um, to help um, during hurricane season. And uh, I <clears throat> approved a request to sponsor them and a presentation for 10 minutes. So we'd love to hear about that. So welcome. And you're free to present. Thank you. Um, Mayor Sykes Klein, thank you and the and the uh, city commissioners for this opportunity just to discuss what uh, we do as an organization. My name is Michael Lavoy. I'm the stake president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints here in this area. Represent the 3,000 members in St. Johns and Putnam County, uh, the eight congregations that meet here in the St. Johns County area, uh, two of which are here in the city of St. Augustine. Our our chapel in the uh, St. Augustine Shores neighborhood has been a staple there for a number of years, over 35 years. And so we appreciate the time tonight. Um, we're the largest private landowner in the state of Florida. Uh, like I said, we have close to 3,000 members in St. Johns County, one of which of those congregations is uh, a deaf unit, which supports the Florida School of Deaf and Blind. We have several members that are uh, participating in that. We have currently two buildings in St. Johns County, the one that I mentioned in uh, the Shores neighborhood, as well as off of County Road 210 in northern St. Johns County. We've just announced and purchased uh, 5.67 acres in the Silverleaf area to build another building, and we're also looking for land in Nocatee to handle the growth that we've had. So why are we here tonight? From an emergency preparation and response perspective, uh, we have many partnerships in disaster relief, which we've helped in, in uh, past storms. Uh, we've helped with bringing in volunteers from all over the southeast during Hurricane Matthew, as well as Hurricane Irma. We love the partnership that we have with our government entities, as well as the city of St. Augustine and, and St. Johns County. We just want you to be aware that we are here, and when a disaster strikes, we do bring in volunteers. What we do is establish command centers where we bring in the supplies. It's a central point of our church relief efforts. Uh, the command center provides training and work orders to teams and provides those teams with resources, uh, camping and work supplies, toilets, so on and so forth, and we coordinate with the community 
when we clean up after a storm. Usually those command centers are at our church buildings, which is important while we locate them geographically where our members are. We ship in these local uh, supplies from what we call the Bishop's Storehouse. We have one storehouse on the west side of Jacksonville. Uh, those are also purchased locally, but also um, the supplies come from Salt Lake City as well as Atlanta and Orlando. These regional storehouses are spread out throughout the southeast. Uh, our members donate money, and we buy those supplies and store them at those regional storehouses for future use. What are in those storehouses? Uh, there's flood-related supplies like crowbars and shovels and debris sleds and those cleanup kits, uh, hurricane and tornado relief supplies, roof repair kits, furring strips, all the things that you need to repair a roof, worker safety supplies, masks, uh, earplugs, gloves, and other PPE. We also have emergency food that's there and over 70 individual items that really contribute to cleaning up after, after the storms. What do the Helping Hands volunteers do? They wear those yellow shirts and they come in the thousands. We uh, muck out uh, houses, which is, uh, those of you very familiar with flooded houses, we call it a muck out. We remove the drywall, uh, insulation, flooring, furniture, and appliances. We cut trees, we remove de uh, debris, we um, repair roofs. We also distribute food during the storms. We also have uh, call center volunteers for what we call a crisis cleanup hotline. Um, and I'll kind of fast forward to that slide because I think it's the most important. This is a website that was developed by a member of the church about 10 years ago. It is agnostic. It's neutral. It's not owned by the church at all. Uh, in fact, what we do is uh, coordinate with organizations such as Catholic Charities, uh, FEMA, uh, Team Rubicon, you know, different organizations that want to provide help after disaster. And we've set up this website where those that want to give help and those that need help are married together. And on this website, the type of work order that is needed is displayed at the location and address that it's needed. And then it changes colors depending on if some organization claims it. In order to join the website, you have to be a reputable organization that wants to provide help, and so it's vetted. And so what we've done is create kind of a virtual call center of volunteers throughout the United States. Anybody with an Internet connection and a heart of a volunteer can answer calls from survivors after disasters and get a work order placed on this map so that those that want to give help can log on and see where the help is needed. Uh, and we can talk further individually, uh, you know, about this, because I think this is the most important uh, aspect of our disaster cleanup. As city officials and usually county officials uh, is worried about public right of way, uh, but private property you can't really deal with, but our citizens need help. And so you need a place to place those, those requests for volunteers and, and volunteer help. This was... Uh, a synopsis of what we did during Hurricane Matthew. Now, it's interesting to note that Hurricane Matthew came at a time where Florida citizens got a little lull and dull with the storms. There was a big gap between storms in 2004 and 2005 until Matthew hit in 2016. Within five days of Matthew making landfall, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints responded with three fully equipped command centers of over 1,900 volunteers. We uh, had over 11,800 volunteers from eight states during the five-week response. Uh, there were over 302,000 work hours donated. That's equivalent to 828 years of volunteer time. We did 5,517 work orders, and uh, it's what the Savior would do. Uh, we love our neighbor, and we didn't ask for a dime for that. And so it's interesting to note that we also, during peacetime, when there's not a storm out there, we have a website that's free. Any volunteer that would like to volunteer for anything, um, a, a food kitchen, um, you know, if you want to go volunteer at any organization that's listed on this website, you can. It's called JustServe.org. It's a, a free community website that we set up that allows organizations 
to ask for volunteers on that website. And uh, you can find that at any time. So from a humanitarian and aid perspective, we have uh, LDS Charities, the humanitarian efforts to relieve suffering for families of all nationalities, religions, and offer hope with the potential for a better life for millions of people around the world. Our Helping Hands uh, volunteer effort, which is emergency response after disasters, has helped over 1 billion members and, and non-members alike throughout the world after disasters. We have the uh, LDS Philanthropies, which is formerly uh, LDS Philanthropies, a department of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is responsible for s facilitating donations to humanitarian and educational initiatives. And then we have what's called the Perpetua Education Fund, which allows for um, people in third, third world countries to get educated. And when they get educated, they donate money back. And so it's just a perpetual education fund to allow people to further themselves throughout the world. Now, I, know I ran through that pretty quick, but I did um, give you a folder and a, a Book of Mormon and other items that you can review later. But I think the message tonight is that we're here, and when disasters strike, we do bring in a, a load of volunteers that wear the yellow shirt. And I think it's important that we partner together, both you know, government entities as well as religious organizations to help our community recover after these disasters. A lot of people, um, they, you know, they don't have money uh, to, to recover. And I think it's important to, you know, really utilize the resources that we have. And, and you are knowledgeable as leaders in the community of what those resources are. These are just some examples of what we've done in the community with uh, St. Gerard's House, uh, with cleaning up graveyards, with donating food. Uh, even, you know, the giving machine uh, was awesome. Uh, if you had a chance this past holiday season to go down to the giving machine that we sponsored, it was a trailer that we brought in and, and uh, had basically uh, all the charitable organizations listed throughout the world. We picked a couple of local charities, St. Gerard's House being one of those, and the community had an opportunity like a vending machine to go in and donate uh, to the charity of their choice. So these are some of the initiatives that we've done. We just like to partner with you and know that we're here and that we help those community citizens whenever we can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any, any comments or? I just um, remember when you put that trailer, it was at the VIC, wasn't it? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Did, was it a good response? Oh, it was excellent. I, I think we have some stats that we can email oh. you. Yes, uh, I'd like and, to know that. Let uh, you know what the stats were, but um, it was it was amazing to see people just walk up and go, "Yeah, I can donate." And, and uh, what a great concept, right? We usually do that during the holiday season. We have that trailer rotate throughout the southeast, throughout the country, really, but they have different vending machines. That oh, they do. That's wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for the presentation. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, and thank you for your efforts in our community. I certainly, some, some of us, I certainly uh, benefited from your teams after Hurricane Matthew, m myself and my family, and um, we do appreciate the work that you do. So thank you. All right. Um, moving on. <clears throat> we are going to go to first reading of ordinances. The first up is ordinance 